I wanted to talk to you today about sketchbooks and the art of practice. I feel like practice is underrated right now. We all take classes and we want it to look exactly like the teachers or we think we're going to become fantastic overnight. We're busy looking for our style and trying to find our palette colors and what we like and what we want to use and what paint, what paper, all that kind of distraction. When in reality, being an artist is about practice. It takes a long time to create and develop a skill, a very long time. Now I've been an artist for my entire life, really. <laughs> I took art classes all through school. I went to an art college. I went to the American Academy of Art in Chicago, and I've worked for myself as a full-time artist since 1996. So I've been around a long time, but I still find the art of practice something that I love to do because it sends me down into discoveries and it sends me into challenges that I like to give myself. I'm always pushing. There's this push and pull whenever I'm doing something that I enjoy so much. It's just taking you into another realm of where you think you're headed because sometimes those paths change and they cross and you just have to be ready for them. So I want to start by opening up the sketchbook. This is fear to a lot of people. That blank white page. How am I gonna fill a book? Page after page after page of just whiteness. And I don't know what to do. And I don't know what to study. And I don't know what colors to use. And I don't, I don't know, it's perfect, it's, it's, expensive. How do I get over that? I'm here to help you with that today. The first thing I want you to think of is what you're comfortable with in size. Do you like, this is an eight by 10. This is a five by seven. I think this is a five and a half by five and a half. What kind of size are you comfortable with? What kind of paper do you like to use? Are you using printer paper? Are you using big sheets of paper? What kind of things are you using that you feel comfortable with? Because that has a lot to do with what is going to become a sketchbook practice and kind of a bit of an art habit. So when I started, I used a skein first because I didn't know any better. I didn't know what I liked and what I wanted my art to look like. I just wanted something that I could create in. And so I carried this around for a long time. And at that time I was doing some urban sketching and that's pretty much what a lot of people were using. Now I did not care for this paper, but it wasn't the watercolor journal as well. It was just the regular moleskin with the, um, the yellow paper. And, you know, it wasn't something that I really liked. You couldn't do a lot of washes on it. It kind of pilled up and I didn't really like that at, at all. So I kind of turned this into what pages were left was what I have in paints. So anytime I got a new paint, I would put it in here. Like here's my Daniel Smith one. I had to add a page because I've been adding to the collection because I really like their paints. So that's what this journal has turned in for me. Then I tried one that was eight by 10 and that really just scared me. When I was doing acrylics, I worked on pretty much eight by tens, but I did a lot of five by sevens because I was more comfortable doing my realistic work. Now, when I was doing color pencils, I like to work on bigger sheets. So think of a quarter sheet of mat board. So they were pretty big, like 16 by 20, but it was a different medium. So with watercolor, I wanted to take my time. So I decided to get a smaller journal. Now this journal here is, I will have it listed below, but it is the Timu Arta, <laughs> and excuse me if I'm badgering that name, but it's a watercolor journal and this one is five and a half by five and a half. It's 140 pounds and there's 24 sheets in there. The first time that I opened this book, I was like, yes, this is nice. I can deal with this because 
it's small. Look at the page, right? So there's my hand. I have a pretty small hand. It's that little. And for me, I knew that I would be comfortable here. I knew I would be able to play. I knew I would be able to color mix and splash and try all the things that I wanted to try. But then I started thinking about what can I put in it? <laughs> That's always the challenge I think with a lot of artists is we love everything. So what do we put in it? Part of my journey was I didn't want to be realistic anymore. I was realistic in acrylics and I was realistic in colored pencil. In watercolor, I wanted to be more painterly, more free, more illustrative, just have a little bit more of me included into the pictures instead of being a photorealist. So here's what I ended up doing. I really gave myself a talk to what do you collect? What do you love? What is something that's going to keep you inspired? If you watched my nature studio vlog number one, you will have found what I like to do. So I actually started thinking and looking around, what, what do I have abundance of? What can I create pretty easily without actually having to do too much thinking? Because watercolor is different than acrylics. It's different than color pencil. So I wanted something that I could just experiment with. And that brings me to this. On my desk, I currently have a big bowl of leaves <laughs> from the nature sketchbook vlog, but I also have always a dish that changes with whatever I found in the leaves. We have a pear tree that's dropping little pears now, so I picked those up. I've got some leaves when I went on vacation. I've got some dried leaves. If they're dried, broken, bruised, and bitten, I am all over them. I don't like the perfect leaf. And that is part of my journey. I want to experience the non-perfect part of it. The beauty and the broken. The beauty and the mangled and tangled and twisted because I love that. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to show you a little bit of my first little journal here. Now, I have to say that I'm going to be sharing a painting with you. We're going to do a painting because I have one final page to go in this book, which is really exciting. And I already have my next one waiting. That's right. <laughs> I want to make sure that I continue the habit. When I normally do a sketchbook, I always start with some kind of artist supply because I love to draw them. They are all over my room. I have them everywhere in vignettes, on my table, in my cabinets, bookcases, everywhere there's little art vignettes. And I usually like to write the date. So this one was started on November 16th, 2021, and I finished it September 19th, 2022. So it's just a way for me to document it a little bit. So my first leaf, it was a ginkgo leaf. And I had found this in a parking lot <laughs> in front of a furniture store. Yes, I still remember that. But the shape is what intrigued me and all those little lines. As I was looking into it, I wanted to really look at the values. So I did a fairly light one here. Then I went a little darker. And here I decided to do full color of the leaf. So I developed these colors to give it a little more weight. You can see how pale that one is. But again, this is me playing with watercolor, trying to figure out how I'm going to make this work for myself. And as I go, you can see I get a little more comfortable with going dark. I loved putting the shadows in there. I started that, but I was not concerned with them trying to look exactly like my leaf. Yes, I wanted them to have similar colors, but I wasn't trying to match the colors perfect. And for me, that is a huge statement, I just have to say. For someone that has done photorealism for the last 12 years, that is a big statement. And it was something that I really kept in the back of my mind. You're not doing it realistic. You're not doing it realistic, just have fun. So I explored colors here. Here I started splashing a little bit on my page. I was trying out different textures because I'm new to watercolor. I really don't know what I'm doing here. I'm having a little fun just trying different color combinations. Here I made a leaf lighter than dark and a darker side. 
Here I made the composition kind of go off the page. I love this one because it seemed very wooly feeling. Doesn't it feel like it's made of fur instead of a crispy leaf? But I loved it too because it was so dried and the texture was so hard, but it was so pre prevalent in all of its little marks. And then I started getting where I wanted to do more of the branches and I wanted to explore palettes. So all of these little colors here that you see are in my leaves and in the branch. And I like that. I like showing what I had done because previously I have no idea what colors I used. My favorite branch in this whole sketchbook is this one here. And this is why <laughs> the delicate stem on these leaves, this was a cardinal flower, I just really love the way that it turned out. I like the boldness of the leaves. Here I was working with wet on wet, which I really hadn't done, where I wet the leaf first and then dropped in some color and dropped darker color over the top. So when I did that, I was like, ooh, now that's a cool technique, right? So this is the branch color and these are the leaf colors. But I want you to see that stem or that branch. Just look how delicate it looks. And I love the way the shadows turned out. It was just something that I was just so proud of. I was like, yes, this is finally it. I like the way that the medium now is playing for me. And I'm already excited four pages in. You can see that. So every day I was out looking for leaves and I just brought in more. So I tried to get creative instead of just doing squares like this. And here I did little paint tubes using the colors that I applied on the leaf. Now this leaf is a little different. While it was wet, I took just a round brush, just a simple round brush. And while it was wet, almost still, let's see, the surface was damp, but no puddles showing. So it was on its way to drying. And as it was drying, I just took my brush and I did little swirls all over the leaf. And I want you to see the texture on this leaf. Let me show it that way. You see how the colors kind of swirled and sometimes it took it off depending on how dry it was. Other times it mixed the colors throughout. And when I did this, I was so impressed with myself. <laughs> and let me just tell you though, in a sketchbook practice, you have to take the wins where you get them. You have to just put your head down and keep doing the work. That's all it is. It's hours and hours of trying and figuring out what's next and what else you can do. And you'll see, you've seen so far that I haven't even started splashing yet. And you know what a huge part that is for me. So as I keep going, here I love the texture. This was the same leaf and I did it three different ways. It was three different colors and it was just beautiful. Here's another pale leaf. I was trying to capture the paleness of the leaves. You can see the one here that I picked up. I'll show you this one in my latest sketchbook. But I was trying to capture that color. It's just such an intriguing color because it's almost colorless if you look at it. Look at that, look at that leaf. These ones have a little green, but this one really doesn't have much color. So I was exploring what I could do with that. And these are the colors that I used. And you can see I'm getting bolder and I'm getting a little more confident. Trying little things, <laughs> trying to decipher what do I want it to look like. Here I use four different greens to get this, but yet I'm still playing. I'm still exploring and still trying to figure this out. And I like that I'm leaving more white of the paper, that I'm not filling it solid. Here was another leaf. It was okay. <laughs> These were thicker, you can see not a lot of water on these versus this guy that had a lot of water on it. These were a little heavier, almost like a mass tone, but I loved the way that they turned out. I love how solid they look. Do you see how full and colorful they are? And I was playing with um, granulate, granulating colors a little bit more too. So this one, I went really pale. And look at the beautiful colors. Look at all the colors I used on this set of leaves. I'm like, why not? We might as well just try it. So as I mixed a color, I put it over here. And it was just something fun. And this is one of the pieces that I really love too because of how light it is and muted. Here's really dark leaves. Again, that solidness of color. 
Do you see how I'm a kind of experimenting with myself and giving myself a way to look at things? Just exploring green leaves. Here are some more with the yellow. Like I said, if it's tangled, mangled, twisted, bitten, I'm all about that. <laughs> This one, I was trying to figure out how to get the red on the leaf and how to make the tip just a little bit red. And so I did that red section first and then did the green next to it. Again, trying to figure it out. I used one color here. This is forest green from the Schminky collection. I love this granulation. Do you see all that granulation in there? All those little dots of color. This is probably where I started getting curious about water because as you are using granulating paints, you need a lot more water so that the granulation moves and transfers because this is also kind of a separating color. You can see here you get like a little brown and then you get kind of a gray color. So as I was adding more water to it, I was like, you know, I kind of like those. I am a texture person anyways. I love texture and art. So seeing that little texture, I was like, hmm. So that kind of gave me a clue of where I wanted to go. Oops. And here this leaf was just so cool that it was brown on one side and green on the other. You can see the splashes are starting to come. I'm still not splashing. This is just a lot of water. I'm letting water just kind of soak in. And that's really my first sketchbook. So as you see, it's just something that I loved that I collect anyways. And it's a way for me to easily find specimens to paint, <laughs> easily. And then this book was started on June 1st, 2020. They kind of overlap. And this one here, now I was experimenting more. I really started to just want to just splash the page with water, not be controlled, like just kind of dipping it in. I wanted to splash and make it go into the background and come out into different places. And here, let me turn it this way. I didn't want to have the control. So by me dab dabbing, like if I wanted to dab drops, I could control that. By just splashing, what happened, happened. So this was part of where my splashing habit came about. Here I was working real big and just splashing away and having a good time. This color is horrible, <laughs> but I was having a great time splashing and learning how to do that and leaving the whites of the paper. You can see this one's a little better. It's darker. Feels more in my comfort zone. Here's some berries and so on. The, the sketchbook just keeps going that way and it keeps me challenged. It keeps me going to the yard, keeps me looking for something that I can find to paint. So I want to explain as I go to the back, I'm going to just flip so you can kind of see. You can see that I'm changing and developing. I'm getting much more confident. Little splashes here and there. This was pear leaves. I was able to collect a whole rainbow of colors. You'll see this goes from yellow to orange, orange to red, red to brown. I had all of those leaves and all those colors. It just made a really nice little uh, page spreads. These were, I call them autumn misfits, <laughs> but they all have a beautiful color. This is probably my favorite spread in this book because the leaves went off the page and there was a plethora of colors. I want you to see that this one again is one of those pale leaves and this one here is a little brown, but then you've got all these greens and browns that kind of interplay with each other. And I really had fun with this spread. Now, when I do leaves, I just lay them on the page and I trace them. I don't even take the time to draw them because it is a practice book for me. So I don't care <laughs> that I've sat there and traced the leaves one bit but it gives, it allows me time to then just think about painting instead of drawing.
here was a fun one too where I just did the bottoms because I love the colors that I collected. Again, I collected in a tray like this. I just put them all in there. And when I looked at the bowl, I saw all these beautiful browns and I just thought that would make a really lovely page. The colors that I used. We did this one together in my nature sketchbook. Here is my version of this white leaf. You can see that it just kind of lays down like that. And that's my rendition of it. And I love the colors of this. They're a little, a little more on the green side than the yellow, but I just thought that was really fun. This was a fake plant. <laughs> it was bluish on the out, on the back side and more greenish here. You can see that I just kind of flipped it and so I mimicked it in this in the book. And then we're to today's specimen. So this is the specimen today. It's look how skinny and spindly these are and yes, they're chewed up. So I've laid it like this on the page and we're just going to have fun painting it. I'm going to use the color tundra green from Schminky. It is from the Tundra set and it's just something that it separates and I love it. For me that is what a sketchbook is. It's about having fun and just painting and practicing and enjoying the process. I think so much we are wanting to get past the beginner stage or the practicing stage and we just want to become professional but to me you miss so much beauty. You miss the learning, you miss the challenges, you miss the, how do I get to this point? How do I like this? Do I like this? Do I not like this? What are you thinking of? That's the part for me that as a beginner, you get to explore all of those for as long as you want. Once you're more professional or you're more advanced, you kind of lose that trial and error process because you've kind of got it down pat. And I like to challenge myself with, let's go back to the beginning and try other things. I'm just gonna make myself a really nice puddle of tundra green here. And we're just gonna start playing. When you're working on something you love or that you are passionate about, I think it comes through in your art. I think it's one of those things that is there. And the more you show it to people or the more you look at it yourself, like just sharing the sketchbook with you and showing you all the progress that I make, even though it is just leaves and everyone has leaves, to me it is a little treasure trove of my experiences my trials and my errors and my challenges and how I've grown. And it doesn't seem like much when you're painting a leaf, but you have to start somewhere. So I want you to just think about that. What do you love? What do you collect? How can you simplify it so that it's not daunting? I let this practice just kind of lead me into my day. Look how beautiful already. I'm not stressed about it. I'm not trying to make it perfect. In fact, I don't even have the leaves sitting in front of me because I just want to use this one color and experience it and see what it will do for me. When you take away the, I have to do this and it has to look one way, and when you're comparing yourself to others, which you should never do as a beginner or anyone else, because it just makes you feel like everyone else is ahead of you, especially as a beginner. So give yourself some grace and let yourself just sit and play. There is nothing wrong with it. In fact, I find it very pleasurable.
Look at that. <laughs> it's not much, but it's just so joyful. I hope you can hear the joy in my voice just playing and painting leaves, really. And yes, I do paint other things, but this is my joy. <laughs> I always said, said that if I could paint one thing my entire life, it would be oak leaves because I love them. There's nothing special about them, but I, I'm surrounded by them. When you sit under a tree and you listen to them and you see them and they're just, it's always just beautiful to me. And I hope they inspire you, you know, go to your yard, go pick up a flower, go pick up a leaf. Like I said, they're abundance and they're always changing. You saw my whole journal. There wasn't one leaf that was the same. They're always a little different. And I think that's part of it for me is it's the same yet it's different. You can see it's not taking me long at all. And this is the last page of the sketchbook, which I'm so excited to share it with you. I'm excited to be doing it on YouTube. I'm excited to have you here watching me. It's pretty exciting. And that, my friends, is my last journal page. Simplicity, beauty, one color, explored, and just lovely. <laughs> I hope it's brightened your day. I hope you're willing to give the art of practice in your sketchbook a little bit of a try. In the next couple weeks, I'm going to be sharing sketchbook tips with you. I'm gonna share a journey that I'm on right now, studying with a book to show you how I'm using it. And it's just a way to explore. Please just let yourself explore and try new things. And every time you heard as I went through the book, you could see my change. You could see it kind of morphing into something. I could actually feel it myself. I could feel like, okay, this is feeling a little bit more like me or where I want to go with it. You know, I want to be looser. I want to still be structured, but loose, if that makes sense. I want you to know that you're looking at a leaf, but I don't want it to be perfect. I don't want to have the veins and every color matching, but yet the practice of doing it over and over is getting me closer to where I want to be. And I hope for you that you're able to experience that practice and look at it with eyes of an adventurer, where you're trying things different, you're being courageous, you're being brave, you're putting paint to paper, which that's all this is, you guys. You don't have to share one thing. I know with social media, we all feel like we have to share, but you don't need to share anything. I share because I'm a teacher and I love people to see what I'm doing or what I'm trying, and maybe it will lead them further in their own journey. But a sketchbook is a personal thing. It's a personal place for you to just play, experiment, and develop. That's how I look at a sketchbook. And I hope that this little video has given you some inspiration to try one for yourself. If you were inspired today, please like, comment, or subscribe. It would help my channel grow. Thanks so much for watching and helping me finish another sketchbook. I really appreciate you being here.